In this video, I'm going to discuss how to write subroutines or functions in ARMV assembly using the GNU assembler. So let's say that I do something like this. Move R1 comma pound three, move R2 comma pound four, and now I want to add those together. Add R0, R1, R2, and then later on I want to basically do the same thing but with different values. So let's say this time we have 26 and we have five and we'll add those together. And I think, wow, I keep using the same line of code. Maybe I'll put it into a subroutine or a function. Of course, I wouldn't really do that if there's only one line of code, but we're trying to keep it simple here. So what I might do is I might say, okay, I'm gonna take this down here. I'm gonna add a label called add nums. And I want to branch down to there. So I'm going to do a branch to add nums, and then I would come down here and I want to branch back. So I need to branch back to say place one, and I have this label here, place one. Now that I can technically do, but the problem becomes when I come down to here and I do. So now, once again, I take these values, I call it add nums. I come down to here and I'm going to return. Where do I return to? Because right now it says place one. So if I say place two, which is where I want to come back to, I have no way of saying, as it's written now, to say, well, the first time go back to place one, but the second time go back to place two. Okay. I mean, I guess technically I could if I had some kind of conditional um, execution, but there's other ways to do it and there's preferred ways to do it. All right. So what I need to do instead is somehow say, when you get down to here, remember where you left, which is here the first time and here the second time, and return to that place. So let's see conceptually what I'm going to actually do. So your code is stored in memory, just like your data is stored in memory. And so there's addresses associated with that. So let's say this is at BF00, this is at BF04, then at BF0A, we have some kind of instruction that says branch to function. And then when that happens, we'll be down here somewhere, say 0x dd04. And if we do some stuff, and then eventually we will say branch back to where we left off, which means here, right? So this would be my, say, next uh, instruction. So how do we keep track of all that? Well, your computer keeps track of where the next instruction is in memory as it's retrieving instructions to process. So it has something called the program counter. And we can write that in our code as PC, and it happens to also be R15. So when we get to this instruction right here, and this is fetched to be decoded and processed, the program counter then will pick up this address right here, BF0C. And so we want to save that somehow, and then when we're down here, somehow say, we'll go back to what was in the program counter at that time. But of course, down here, the program counter now is using these addresses because these are the next instructions. So what we'll do is we'll use what's called the link register, which we can reference as LR in our code, but it's also R14. And so what we want to do is we use a special branch instruction right here, which will be BL and then whatever label we want to go to, say function. And when we execute this, it will store this address BF0C into R14. And so then we branch down to here. The program counter continues to move through these, and then we want a special branch to go back to say, well, what I want you to do is look at what's in the link register, take this value here, and put it back in the program counter so we know that's our next instruction. And to do that, I'm going to do a BXLR. And these don't have to be capitalized. I'm just doing that to make it more clear what we have. So this will be BL, whatever our label is, and this will be BXLR.
So let's put that in our code. So these labels are actually unnecessary. And we'll change this to B L add nums. Same thing here, and then this will change to B X L R. So let's see if that works. So as dash g dash o object dot o code dot s link it and let's look in the debugger. So we got three and register one, four and register two, branch down to our subroutine, add those together, we have seven right here in R0, branch back. So this is the next instruction. So now as we continue to execute, we will step, put 26 up there, put five in R2, branch down, add those together to get 31, branch back, which is now down here, step, step, and quit. So as we collect the subroutines, we may choose to create some kind of library. So instead of having the code here, maybe what we're going to do is create some type of library of subroutines. So I've already done that. So here's my add nums again, and I've added this additional subroutine where given the values in R1 and R2, it will find the maximum of those and put it in R0 and then branch back. Now notice up here, instead of using dot global underscore start, I say dot global with the names of the two subroutines. So now what I need to do is say as dash g if I want debugging information. Um, and actually let's add some stuff over here. So I'm gonna say move r1 comma pound six move r2 comma pound 13 and then do bl find max and just to convince ourselves it really can work let's change it to something else change this to say 45 and 17. so the difference is in this one the second number is the max and this one the first number is max and technically we could test it with the same number so now what do we need to do over here? Once again, I'm going to include debug information, tell it where the, uh, what to name the object file. But now I'll say code.s as well as subroutines.s. So now I built it with these two. Now I'm going to link it and call the debugger. So breakpoint, run. So step. This should be the same as before. It's like we expected. So now we're down to find max. So the top part, I just blew through that since we just saw this, but I just did what we had before. I found seven for this, 31 for this. Now we find the max. So put six in the first register, 13 in the second one. Jump down to find max, compare those. This says uh, put R1 into R0 if the first number is greater and it's not. And then this basically is otherwise or an else. It says if it's less than or equal, put R2 in there because if if they happen to be equal numbers, it actually doesn't matter which of these I put in there and I just happen to put the equal for the second thing. So we look at that, did that, put 13 there, branch back, now we'll put 45 in the first number, 17 the second number, branch down, compare, just updated with the 45, branch back, now we're back at the end. So now what if we decide we want to have a function that calls another function? So let's look at an example of that. So let's get out of this. And now let's do code2.s. And now as it's written, it's not technically correct. Because we may decide to do this. Let's say we write this function called max10 or subroutine where what it does, it finds the maximum of R1 and R2 and then adds 10 to that and stores it in R0. So this is branch down to max 10. I come down here and I immediately call this next function. 
So now I'm gonna do BL to find max. I still have the values in R1, R2, come down there, compare those, put whichever one is the max into R0. And then when I come here, I take what is currently stored in R0 and add 10 to it and reassign it back to R10. Now what's the problem with this? Well, there's only one link register. So when I leave here, or technically I'm here, when I leave here, the program counter will point to this. And that's what goes into the link register. So I come to here, but then when I do this branch, now I update the link register with the program counter value, which points to this. I just lost the address for up here. So somehow I need to save that and then restore it before I leave because I still want to do this. So the easiest way to do that is to push the values onto the stack and then pop those from the stack. So what I'm going to do, and we'll replace this now with I'm going to push LR onto the stack. And then before I try to return, I'm going to pop whatever is on the top of the stack into register LR. This doesn't say uh, pop link register. It says get whatever is currently on the stack no matter how it got there and put it into the link register. So let's see if this works. So now I'm gonna do as-g-o object.o code 2.s ld object and then gdb a.out. So we put three into a register, four into a register. We step, we branch down to uh, max 10, we're going to save the current value of the link register. Now I'm going to call find max, compare R1, R2, find out that 4 is the max, return, and now I take the 4, add 10 to it to get 14. I'm going to pop what's from the link register, return where I left off. So now we're back up to here and we can see we have the 14. And now I'm going to step again, step again, branch down, push the current value of the, uh, the uh, link register onto the stack, go to the next function, compare. We found out that 21 is the max. We return, we take 21, add 10 to it, to get 31, put that in R0, we pop what's on the stack back into the link register so we can return correctly from here, go back, and now we're at this point, and we can step, step, and quit. So this is necessary, once again, so that way, after we return from find max, we can return back up to our calling location here.